Hello my unapologetic beauties, welcome to another episode of Unapologetically Her, hosted by yours truly, Natalie Nadine. Unapologetically Her is a podcast created to not only tackle all things female and urban pop culture, but to empower, embrace, and educate the women of today's society. What's up, beautiful people? Welcome back to another episode of Unapologetically Her, the podcast that's for her, by her. And can I say, I've missed the mic. I've missed being behind the mic. I've missed the setup. I missed talking with you guys. Let me just say, your girl had to pull a little Whitley Gilbert, relax, relate, release herself. But we are back in action. We're back full force, full swing. So let's get into it. Now, your girl turned 25 back on the 19th. Yes, one, she's a Virgo. And two, your girl is a quarter of a century years old. Like, why do people keep saying that when you're 25? Oh my gosh, you're a quarter of a century. Oh my gosh, welcome to the quarter of the century club. Like, you're 25, everything's about to change. I said, what? Girl, bye. Nothing is changing just because I'm 25. Okay, maybe a little extra adulting, but everything stays the same. Let me tell you, I've been 25 for about, what, a week and a half? Is it? Yeah, a good week and a half. We're about to hit two weeks. And let me tell you, I've already started reflecting on life, thinking about my choices, my decisions. I'm here having flashbacks. You would think I'm 50 years old and not 25, But that's how I feel on the inside. I've always been described as a young girl with an old soul. And this is where we are in life right now. (laughs) This is where we stand. Within the last week and a half, although I'm taking it back to the last like year and a half, but within the last week and a half, I've done a bit of self-reflection. I've thought a lot about life, where I've come, how far I've come, where I've come from, where I'm going where I want to go. Thinking about my 25 at 25. What are my top 25 moments? Today I want to discuss life lessons, memorable moments, future goals, what I will not tolerate anymore. And I want to give some shout outs to some special people in my life. If you made it up until the point of 25, who child, you a real one, a real one. Real one, I messed around and found a real one. Real one. Okay, that's enough singing. Sorry. Now, like I said, let's jump into it. When I think about life lessons, the first thing that comes to mind is live in the moment and stop thinking so far ahead. Now, you see whenever jobs, teachers, people ask you, so where do you see yourself in five years? What are your future goals? Where do you see yourself in 10 years? What plans do you have for the future ahead? We've been asked this question so many times that it kind of forced us to be in that mindset, always thinking ahead, always planning, calculating our steps, trying to execute accordingly to make sure we reach those goals. Stop, 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 stop it right there. Stop thinking so far ahead. Think about the next two years, sure, three max. But we spend so much time thinking about the time ahead and so far ahead that we're not embracing what's going on right now. We're not present, we're not living in the moment. We're not enjoying the time. Maybe some of us won't see five years ahead. Maybe some of us won't make it 10, 15. And that's not me trying to down on your parade, trying to think negatively, but that's me being realistic. Stop planning and thinking so far ahead and just plan for the now. Live for the now. Also, in terms of living for the moment and embracing the now, embrace the losses. Embrace the losses, embrace the failure, and turn them into lessons. Use them to your advantage. So when you get to that place in the future, you know better, you'll do better, you'll get better. 
Number two, not everyone is meant to have a permanent seat at the table. Now, this was a really hard lesson for me. This will be an episode coming up later on in the future. But when I talk about a seat at the table, I talk about friendships. Not all friendships are made to last. Everybody has a reason and a season. If you have someone who's made it this far into your life, like seven years plus, that is amazing, chow. Round of applause. But not everyone makes it that far. Right now, you're lucky if people make it five, if they make it three. We have to come to terms with there's a reason and a season for everybody and everything. Not everyone is meant to sit at the table with you, and that's okay. Some friendships weren't built to last. Sometimes you're friends with them because you saw them five days a week. Sometimes you're friends because it was great in that moment. Sometimes we outgrow people. That's okay, too. Now, another life lesson I've realized is patience and faith is above all else now i'm not saying i'm here going to be singing amazing grace yeah i'm not doing that i am not the most religious person on the block but let me tell you i felt that shift i felt that difference when walking with the lord and walking away from him i felt that difference praying every night versus not praying every night Being thankful for how far God has, I would say, has guided me. Instead of just relying on my own understanding. Ooh, look at me. What? Quoting verses like it's Sunday school. Ooh, I learned something. But for real, patience and faith above all else. I've realized for me, and this is a personal thing, it's not to enforce and push religion onto people, to push God onto people. It's a personal thing. I realized for me, giving thanks, realizing what the Lord has done for me, what he can do for me, has really helped me in more ways than one. If I just have the patience and put my faith and my trust in him, I get a lot further than if I just relied on myself. And what I believe should happen. What I believe is right. Number four. Be myself. And the right ones will find me. Now we always talk about tribe. Right? You go back to the history. And you talk about tribes and the village and our people. Same thing applies now. We all have a tribe. There are people who are going to be a part of our tribe. But you cannot meet your tribe. You cannot be a part of the right tribe without being your authentic 100% self. Did you hear me? I said authentic 100% self. There's so many times where I felt like I had to conform. I had to be a chameleon. I had to... Be like them in order to have the right quote-unquote friends. In order to be accepted, in order to be with my people, my peeps. (laughs) No, no. (laughs) Skirt, skirts. That's not how this works. Be yourself. I tell people I am not a person, a child of today. I am a 50-year-old trapped in a 25 year old's body (laughs) i have my random moments i watch the news every day i am sometimes very quiet or i could be very talkative maybe i'm not the girliest or maybe i'm not this or i'm not that but who i am i am me and i'm not changing that for anybody And let me tell you, since accepting myself more for who I am, since being authentic and living in my truth, I've met some of the most amazing people. And that's because they see me for me and not who they want me to be, if that makes sense. So be your authentic self 
and you will find your tribe. Now, the next thing is don't take life for granted. That's a big one. Take life for granted. Don't take life for granted. How many times, how many different ways can I say this? Appreciate the life that you have. Appreciate being alive and living in this moment. Often, often times, things can change at a blink of an eye. You have to be grateful for what is where you are, who you are. Stop having this mindset of, I can do it tomorrow. I'll call them next week. I can do this at a later date. You don't know what the future holds. You don't even know what half an hour from now holds, much less tomorrow or next week. You don't know what's going to happen in three months. Don't take life for granted. Appreciate the time that you are in right now and make the most out of it. Shifting gears. Let's talk about memorable moments. Now, this one's a two-parter, part six and seven. We're talking about graduation. And I think back to my high school graduation. I think back to walking across that stage. Yes, high school. Everyone always talks about university and college, but we need to acknowledge high school graduation. Child, those four years were tough. But we made it. Those were the four years that prepared us for adulthood. Prepared us for a next chapter that we knew nothing about. When I think back to university graduation, ooh, I literally get emotional just thinking about it. So many obstacles. Late night, early mornings, all-nighters, the tears, the sweat, the frustration. The thoughts of, am I going to make it? Am I wasting my time? Am I wasting my money? But we made it. (laughs) Mama, we made it. That feeling that I got walking across the stage. That feeling that I got seeing the look on my mom's face at the end of it all. It was worth it. Would I do it all again? Hell no. (laughs) I would not go through those five years again. However, I appreciate what I went through then. I don't need to go back through it now. You know what? That's a damn lie. Number eight, going back to school. So I just said all that to say your girl's back in school. She's doing a postgraduate program in public relations and corporate communications. I decided this is a memorable moment because I am doing something to better myself, to better my future, to better my chances of getting that dream job or starting something for myself. So in another year or two, we can talk about this experience. (laughs) We can talk about the challenges. We can talk about why it's so memorable. Right now I'm living in it, but the fact that I made the choice to go back is memorable to me. Another moment was having my photos published and a bride, I guess you could say bridal, yeah. Bridal wedding magazine. I officially carry the title of a published photographer. What? That's crazy to me. I was able to go to Shoppers Drug Mart. If you're not from Canada or Toronto, then you know the local drugstore. Went to the magazine section, picked up the magazine, and saw two of my photos in there. Shoutouts to Melissa from Lux Collection Bridal. Because it wouldn't have been possible if it wasn't for her. She had that faith. She had that trust. She saw my worth. And said, let's do this together. (laughs) Black girl excellence. Black girl magic. And I'm here for it. Another memorable moment for me was being interviewed by the Biz Mixer. I was a part of their 30 Lives, 30 Human series. And to me, that's amazing. I still watch that interview, listen to it as a podcast to this day. 
Because, hey, someone thought I was interesting enough to interview. Someone wanted to speak to me about my life and my podcast, what it means to be unapologetically her. Absolutely amazing and memorable. And that was, it was at that moment that I realized what I could be, what this podcast could be, where I could go. Another memorable moment have been the interviews that I've conducted myself. From Natalie Wilson to Trey Anthony to Rochelle Rain to Shalina from Everything 90s Podcast. What just to all the different faces and voices and people that I've interviewed, that's memorable. At one point, I wanted to go into journalism. And I was going to interview people. I was going to be entertainment journalist, interview all the latest celebs. Then I realized that wasn't really the path for me. And to see that I took that and made it my own when it came to the podcast and all the people I've come across. And all the people I know I will come across in the future. I can't wait. Now let's talk about future goals. Now, this might sound cliche, not might, it does, but I wanna work for myself. I wanna have my own company, my own business, and do what it is that I love to do. I know, I know, everybody says that, but it's not meant for everybody. But you know what? I don't care what everybody thinks or whatever, what everybody feels. This is what I want for me, and I'm gonna make sure I make it work and I make it come to life, whatever way possible. I always feel like there's more out there for me. And this is not to knock a nine to five. This is not to knock the structured way of living. But I always felt that there's more to it than that for myself. But I need to be in full control. I need to control the narrative. I need to be able to go out there and see what's there for me another goal i want to expand the podcast i love it it's my brainchild it's my passion it's my baby it's my everything but just like a kid you want to see it evolve and you want to see it come out to something amazing that's what the podcast is for me it's like i have a daughter And my daughter has taken their first steps. They evolved, now they're in school. But what's next? What's the next steps for her? Now the next future goal that I have for myself is solo traveling. Now mind you, I love traveling with my family, but there's something that solo traveling will give you that traveling with other people will not. I want to be like Julia Roberts in Eat, Pray, Love. Getting that new found sense of independence, figuring out who I am, having these life experiences that I can't necessarily get when traveling with other people or being at home. The next goal, I want to be able to give back. I want to be at that place in my adult life where I can give back to the girls in my community. The girls who are just like me, awkward and shy, but with so much potential. They just need the right person, the right resources, a helping hand. I want to do that both here in Scarborough and in Jamaica. I don't know. It's just something that's always been on my heart for a very long time. The last goal I have for myself is to live in my truth. Be who I am. Be authentic and be happy with who I am. I want to be able to just live in my truth and accept all that's around me. Now, while reflecting, I also had to think about the things I will no longer tolerate. Now, mind you, I've tolerated a lot of things that I probably shouldn't have, but it is what it is. Those are the lessons Those are the the teachings. There we go. Can't speak today. Those are the teachings. 
those are the obstacles that I was supposed to cross and conquer in order to be where I am today. When I think about the things I will no longer tolerate, I think about my loyalty being taken advantage of. Please don't take my kindness for weakness. Yep, that's what I'm talking about. You know that song. I'm very nice. I'm loyal. I'm giving to the core. However, I noticed a lot over the years. People took that as my weakness, used it and took advantage of it, used it and turned it against me. Now, how the hell did I let that happen? That's something I will no longer tolerate. Understand, I am nice, I am giving, I am loyal, but there's boundaries, there's limits. And if you cross it, there's no second chance. Sorry. I treat others the way I want to be treated. And that's that's that. Something else I said I will no longer tolerate is beating up on myself. I need to stop with the shoulda, coulda, wouldas. I need to stop beating up myself for mistakes and failures and certain choices that probably weren't the best. I need to stop beating up on myself and be like, it's okay. These things happen. It's a part of growing up. I'm only 25. I'm not supposed to have everything figured out. I'm not supposed to know the who, what, when, where, how, why's. I'm not supposed to know what's coming next. I'm not supposed to be able to look at someone and be like, "Mm, stay alert, stay safe. No, (laughs) I'm not supposed to. Stop, and this is a message for everyone, stop beating up on yourself for the things you don't know. Stop beating up on yourself for certain choices that you made that probably weren't the best. I need to stop putting others before myself. I have a bad habit of doing that. Let me make sure you're fed. Let me make sure you're not thirsty. Let me make sure you're feeling well. Let me make sure you're okay. I need to stop giving pieces of myself away. Then when it's time for me to give to me, there's nothing left. I'm filling up glasses while I'm half full. Then what happens? And I'm not saying you need to be selfish and greedy. But what I'm saying is that it's okay to put yourself first. How do you expect to help others if you can't help yourself? How do you expect to help others when you're not in a good place? When you're not feeling well, doing well? Put yourself first. Focus on you. Make sure you're okay. Then you seek to help the next person. It's okay. You can put yourself first. Don't feel guilty. Do not feel guilty. Another thing that I won't tolerate is letting the past define who I am. Now, I've said it before. We've all made choices. We've all made mistakes. We've all done things that we aren't necessarily proud of. Things that we probably shouldn't have done. But that was a moment in time. Make the conscious effort to take from that what you will and apply it to the future to do better. But do not let it define who you are. Do not let it dictate where you're supposed to be in life. Ooh, I sound like T.G. Jakes, chat. Bobby Jones Gospel on BET. This is what it's giving. Iyanla fix my life. Did you hear that? And I bet you I can't remember what I just said because it just shook me to the core. Do not let the past define who you are. A moment in time. Take it for what it is and move forward. Something else that I refuse to tolerate is inconsistency. Inconsistency with myself, with friends, with families, with relationships with people of interest. I don't like inconsistency and yet I tolerate it. Yet I give them a pass, but it irritates my soul. 
I won't tolerate inconsistency. Especially if it's a pattern, if it's a habit, I will no longer accept it. Now, when I look back the last couple of years and I think about the people who were in my life and who are in my life, there's five people that stand out the most to me. First of all, shout outs to Denise. Now, if you have no idea who this is, I'm about to tell you. You can head over to my Instagram at Natalie Nadine to see who this is. Denise, I've known for the last eight years. No, nine years. Nine years. Nope, eight years. Eight to nine years, somewhere around there. Anyways, my math is not the best, clearly. But this is someone who I said, God will make you cross paths with people and build a connection that you would least expect. This woman started out as my manager, started out as someone who I was like terrified of. And this woman turned into my friend, my big sister, my mentor, another mother, someone I can confide in, someone I can trust. Someone who I can go to for advice and will not be biased because it's me, but will tell me like it is because it's me. You don't get people like that often. When you get them, when you find them, you lock them in and you cherish them. You you get those kind of people on rare occasions. I think about my girl Titi. Now we met at school and we met towards the end of our academic career. But let me tell you, me and this girl talk like we've known each other our whole lives. There is no conversation that we have that lasts less than an hour. We come off the phone and then we text each other right away. Did you feel the shift in the energy? Did you feel the sense of rebirth and renewal? Find those friends that every time you talk, it's not about drama or gossip, but it's about how to better yourself how to take it to the next step. What will be the next step? Let's brainstorm together to help each other win. Next, we have my bestie, okay? The Erica to my Loring, the Bonnie to my Clyde, the Tia to my Tamara. You got my girl, Tini. She doesn't need no introduction. You've seen her on the podcast. You've heard about her. You've seen the pics. That's my girl. That's my ride or die. This is also a friendship that started off at work and we literally became best friends. It's literally, when they say soulmates, this is my soulmate as a best friend. Literally, I can be up at three o'clock in the morning texting, ringing down this girl's phone and she will answer. She will give me the honest opinions. She will help me when I need it. And it's vice versa. Shout outs to my madre, my mama, my mama, my mother, my mom. Let me tell you, just like every mother-daughter relationship, you have your ups and your downs. But that is my bestie, my rada da from day one to the end of time. You feel me? It's always been us two. At the end of the day, no matter what, I have my mother above all else, above everyone else. So thank you, mom. I wouldn't have gotten this far without you. Last but not least, shout outs to myself. Oftentimes we give people so much praise and we thank them. We thank, there we go, enunciate. We thank them for helping us get to where we are. But oftentimes we forget to thank ourselves. We forget to give ourselves a pat on the shoulder. Be proud of how far you've come. Be proud of where you're going. Be proud of who you are in the moment. Thank yourself for not giving up on yourself. So thank you me, you're welcome boo. Keep zooming you.
That's what I'm saying. So shout outs to me for being there for me through the thick and the thin, for riding out the wave. There's light at the end of the tunnel and I can see it now. That concludes this week's episode. Thank you all so much for listening. Thank you for riding with me once again. I look forward to all the episodes and the guests that we have coming up later on this year. You can listen to the podcast on all streaming platforms. Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts. You can even listen to the podcast or even watch certain episodes on YouTube. Search up Unapologetically Her Podcasts. Don't forget to hit me up on Instagram, at Unapologetically Her, and on Twitter, at Natalie Nadine. Don't forget to download your favorite episodes to listen to on the go. Answer some poll questions, leave a comment, talk with your girl. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, podcast topics, send me an email, contact.unapologeticallyher at gmail.com. Once again, thank you all so much for listening. Stay tuned for a new episode. Much love, peace. I appreciate you all. Bye.